which is written by Roald Dahl, read by Little Book Owl. A note about witches. In fairy tales, witches wear silly black hats and black clocks and they ride on broomsticks. But this is not a fairy tale. This is about real witches. The most important thing that you should know about a real witch is this. Listen very carefully. Never forget what is coming next. Real witches dress in ordinary clothes and look very much like ordinary women. They live in ordinary houses and they live in ordinary jobs. This is why they are so hard to catch. A real witch hates children with a hot red sizzling hatred. This is more sizzling and red hot than any hatred you could possibly imagine. A real witch spends all her time plotting to get rid of the children in her particular territory. Her passion is to do away with them one by one. It is all she thinks about the whole day long. Even if she is working as a cashier in a supermarket or typing letters for a businessman or driving around in a fancy car and she could be doing any of these things. Her mind will always be plotting and scheming and churning and burning and whizzing and fizzing with monstrous but thirsty thoughts. Which child, she says to herself all day long, exactly which child shall I choose for my next whistling? A real witch gets the same pleasure from swizzling a child as you get from eating a plate full of strawberries and thick cream. She reckons on doing away with one child a week, anything less than that, and she becomes grumpy. One child a week is 52 a year. Squish them and squiggle them and make them disappear. This is the motto of all witches. Very carefully a witch is chosen. Then the witches dog the wretched child like a hunter stalks a little bird in the forest. She treads softly. She moves quietly. She gets closer and closer. Then at last, then everything is ready. Oops. Sparks fly, flames sleep, oil pools, rats howl, screen shows, and the child disappears. <coughs> A witch, you must understand, does not knock children on the head or strike knives into them or shoot them at them with a pistol. People who do those things get caught by the police. A witch never gets caught. Don't forget she that she has magic in her fingers and then really dance in her blood. She can make stones jump like frogs and can turn make tongues of flame for flickering around the surface of the water. These magic powers are very frightening. Lucky there are not a great number of real witches in the world, today's world. But there are very still quite enough to make you nervous. In England there are probably about 100 of them to all together. Some countries have more, others have not quite so many. No country in the world is completely free from witches. A witch is always a woman. I do not wish to speak badly about women. Most women are lovely. But the fact remains that all witches are women. This is no such thing as male witch. On the other hand, a girl is always a male. So indeed, a forest. Both are dangerous, but neither of them is half as dangerous as a witch. Real witch, as far as children are concerned. A real witch is the easily the most dangerous of all the creatures on earth. What makes her doubly dangerous is the fact that she doesn't look dangerous. Even when you know all the secrets, you'll hear about those in a minute. You will still never be quite sure whether it is a witch, are you guessing, or just a kind lady. If a tiger were able 
to make Huss himself look like a large dog with a waggy tail, you will probably go up and pat him on the head. And that would be the end of you. It is the same with witches. They all look like nice women, nice ladies. Kindly examine the picture below. Which lady is the witch? That is a difficult question, but it is one that every child must try to answer. For all you know, a witch might be living next door to you right now, or she might be the woman with the bright eyes who sat opposite you on the bus this morning. Or she might be the lady with a dazzling smile who offered you a sweet from a white paper bag in the street before lunch. She even and this will make you jump. She might even be your lovely school teacher who is reading these words at you at this very moment. Look carefully at that teacher. Perhaps she's smiling at the upswing of such a suggestion. Don't let that put you off. It could be part of a cleverness. I'm not, of course, telling you for one second that your teacher act is a witch. All I'm saying is that she might be one. It is most likely unlikely. But, and here comes the big but. It is not impossible. Oh, if only there were a way of telling for sure whether a woman was a witch or not, then we could round them all up and put them in the meat grinder. Unhappily, there is no such way. But there are a number of little signals you can look out for. Little quirky habits that all witches have in common. And if you know about these, if you remember them always, then you might just possibly manage to escape from being squittled before you are very much older. My grandma. I myself have two separate encounters with witches before I was eight years old from the first escape unharmed. But on the second occasion, I was not so lucky that things to me that would probably make you scream when you read about them that can't be helped. The truth must be told the fact that I am still here and able to speak to you. However, particularly, I may look as you entirely to my wonderful grandmother. My grandmother was a nomad. The Norwegian knows all about watches. For Norway, with its black forest and icy mountains, is where the first witch cup, which is came from. My father and my mother were also Norwegian. But because my father had a business in England, I had been born there and I had lived there and had started going to an English school. Twice a year at Christmas and in the summer, we went back to Norway to visit my grandmother. This old lady, as far as I could gather, was just about the only surviving relative we had on either side of our family. She was my mother's mother, and I absolutely adored her. When she and I were together, we spoke in either Norwegian or in English. It didn't matter which. We were equally fluent in both languages, and I have admit that I am closer to her than to my mother. Soon after my seventh birthday, my parents took me as usual to spend Christmas with my grandma in Norway, and it was over there while my father and mother and I were driving in icy weather. Just looked off slow. That our car skidded off the road and went tumbling down into a rocky river. My parents were killed. I was firmly strapped into the back seat and received only a cut on the forehead. I won't go into the horrors of that terrible afternoon. I still get shivers when I will think about it. I finished up, of course, back in my grandmother's house with her arms around me tight, both of us crying the whole night long. What 
tell me going to do now? I asked him through the tears. to England. No, she said, I could never do that. Heaven shall take my soul, but nobody shall keep my bones. The very next day, in order that we may both try to forget our greatest sadness, my grandmother started telling me stories. She was a wonderful storyteller, and I was thrilled by everything she told me. But I didn't become really excited until she got on to the subject of witches. She was apparently a great expert on these creatures, and she made it very clear to me that her witch stories, unlike most of the others, were not imaginary tales. They were all true. They were the gospel truth. They were history. Everything she was telling me about witches had actually happened and I had better believe it. That was worse. What was far, far worse was that witch would still with us. They were all around us and I had better believe that too. Are you really being truthful, Grandma? Really? Truly truthful, my darling, she said. You would last long in this woods if you don't know how to spot a witch when you see one. But you told me that witches look like ordinary women, Grandma, so how can I spot them? You must listen to me, my grandma said. You must remember everything I tell you. After that, all you can do is cross your heart and pray to heaven and hope for the best. We were in the big living room of free her house. Also, and I was ready for bed. The curtains were never drawn in that house. Through the windows, I could see huge snowflakes flying slowly onto an outside world. <coughs> that was a black style. My grandmother was tremendously old and wrinkled, with a massive white body which was smothered in grey lace. She sat there majestically in her armchair, filling every inch of it. Not even a mouse could have squeezed in to sit beside her. I, myself, just seven year old, was crouched on the floor at her feet, wearing pajamas, dressing gown, and flippers. You swear you aren't pulling my leg? I kept saying to her, You swear you aren't just pretending? Listen, she said. children who have simply vanished off the face of this, the earth never to be seen again. The witches took them. I still think you are just trying to frighten me, I said. I am trying to make sure you don't go the same way, she said. I love you. And I want you to stay with me. Let me about the tell me about the disappearing children. I said my grandma was the only grandma I've ever met who smoked cigarettes. She lit one now. <coughs> A long black cigarette that smelt of burning rubber. The first child you who disappeared, she said. Was called Rahim Gansen. Rangild was about eight at the time when she was playing with the little sister on the lawn. The grand, their mother, who was baking bread in the kitchen.
pigeon came outside for a breath of air. Where's Renilde? she asked. She went away with the tall lady, the little sister said. What tall lady? the mother said. The tall lady in white clothes, the little sister said. She took Rockhold by the hand and led her away. No one, my grandma said, ever saw Rockhold again. Did they search for her? I asked. They searched for miles around. Everything in the town helped, but they never found her. What happened to the other four children? He asked. They just vanished as Rahul did. How, Grandma? How did they vanish? In every case, a strange lady was seen outside the house just before it happened. But how did they vanish? I asked. The second one was very particular, my grandma said. There was a family called Hussi. So they lived at Holem in Colin and they had an old oil painting in the living room which they were very proud of. The painting showed some ducks in the yard. <coughs> Outside a farmhouse there was no people in the painting, just a flock of ducks and a crazy farmland and farmhouse in the background. It was a large painting and rather pretty well. One day there, Dada Sauvage came home from school eating an apple. She said a nice lady had given it to her on the street. The next morning, little Sauvage was not in her bed. The parents searched everywhere. But they couldn't find her. Then all of a sudden, her father shouted, There she is. That savage feeding the ducks. He was pointing at the oil painting, and sure enough, savage was in it. She was standing in the farmyard. In the act of throwing bread to the ducks out of a basket, the father rushed up to the painting and touched her, but that didn't help. She was simply part of the painting, just a picture painted on canvas. <coughs> Did you ever see that painting, Grandma? with the little girl in it? Many times, my grandma said, and the particular thing was that little savage kept changing her position in the picture. One day she would be actually inside the farmhouse. You could see her face looking out of the window. Another day she would be far over to the left with the ducks in her arms. Did you see her moving in the picture, Grandma? Nobody did. Wherever she was, whether outside feeding the duck or inside looking out of the window, she was always motionless. <coughs> Just a figure painted in oil. It was very odd, my Grandma said. Very odd indeed. And what was more odd of all, that as the years went by, the she kept growing older in the picture. In ten years, the small girl had become a young woman. In thirty years, she was a middle-aged. And then all at once, fifty-four years after it all happened, she disappeared from the picture altogether. You mean she died? I said. Who knows? <coughs> My grandma said, Some very mysterious things go on in the 
this world of witches. That's two you've told me about. I said, what about the third one? The third one was little Bridget Stevenson. My grandmother said she lived just across the road from us. One day she started growing feathers all over her body. Within a month she had turned into a large white chicken. Her parents kept her for years in a pen in the garden. She even laid eggs. What color eggs? I said. Brown ones. My grandmother said. Biggest egg I've ever seen in my life. Her mother made omelettes out of them. Delicious they were. I gazed up at my grandma who was tall. Some ancient queen on a throne. Her eyes were misty gray and they seemed to be looking at something many miles away. The cigarette was the only real thing about her at that moment. And the smoke in me blowed around her head in blue clouds. But the little girl who became a chicken didn't But the little girl who became a chicken didn't disappear. I said No, not Brigitte. She lived on for many years laying up brown eggs. You said all of them disappeared. I made a mistake. My grandma said, I'm getting old. I can remember everything. What happened to the fourth child? I asked. The fourth was a boy called Harold. My grandmother said, one morning his skin went all grayish yellow. Then it became hard and cracking like the shell of a nut. By evening the boy had turned to stone. Stone? I asked. You mean real stone? Granite, she said. I'll take you to see him if you like. They still keep him in the house. He stands in the hall. A little stone statue. Visitors lean their umbrellas up against him. Although I was very young, I was not prepared to believe anything my grandmother told me. And yet she spoke with such conviction, with such a seriousness. <coughs> with never a smile on her face or a twinkle in that I found myself beginning to wonder. Go on, Grandma, I said. You told me there were five together, all together. What happened to the last one? Would you like a puff on my cigarette? She said, I'm only seven, Grandma. I don't care what age you are, she said. You'll never catch a cold if you smoke a cigarette. What about number five, Grandma? Number five, she said, chewing the end of her cigarette. As though it was delicious progress. Was another, another interesting case. A nine year old boy called Cliff was some holidays with his family on Fudger. And the whole family was picnicking and swimming off the same rocks on one of these little islands. Young Leaf divided into the water, and his father, who was watching him, noticed that he stayed under for an unusual long time. Then he came to the surface at last. He wasn't Leaf anymore. <coughs> what was he, Grandma? He was a poor boy. He wasn't. He couldn't have been. He was lovely in purpose, she said, and as friendly as could be. Grandma, I said, yes, my darling. 
Did he really enjoy that in the pork pies? Absolutely, she said. I knew his mother well. She told me all about that. She told me how Levi the Barbarians stayed with them all that afternoon, giving his brothers and sisters ride on his back. They had a wonderful time. Then he waved a flipper at them and swam away, never to be seen again. But Grandma, I said, how did they know that the Barbarians was actually Levi? He meant to talk to them. My grandma said he laughed and joked with them all the time. He was giving them rides, <coughs> but wasn't there a tremendous first event being happened? I asked. Not much, my grandma said. You must remember that in Norway we are used to that sort of thing. There were witches everywhere. There's probably one living in our street this very moment. It's time you went to bed. A witch could come in through my window in the night, would she? I asked in a squeaky little silly thing. No, my grandma said. A witch will never do silly things like climbing up a drain pipes or breaking into people's house. You'll be quite safe in your bed. Come on, I'll tuck you in. How to recognize a witch? The next evening, after my grandmother had given me my bath, she took me once again into the living room for another story. Tonight, the old woman said, I'm going to tell you how to recognize a witch when you see one. Can you always be sure? I asked. No, she said. You can't be sure. And that's the trouble. But you can make pretty good guess. She was dropping silver ashes all over her lap. And I hoped she wasn't going to catch on fire before she told me how to recognize a witch. In the first place, she said, a real witch is certain always to be wearing clothes when you meet her. Surely not always, I said. What about in the summer when it's hot? Even in the summer, my grandmother said, she has to. Do you know what to know why? Why? I asked. Because she doesn't have fingernails. Instead of fingernails, she has thin, covered clothes like cats. And she wears the clothes to hide them. I do. Lots of very respectable women's wear clothes, especially in the winter. So this doesn't help you very much. Mom, I used to wear clothes. I said, not in the house. My grandmother said, which is my clothes in the house. They only take them off when they go to bed. How do you know all this, Grandma? To whom do you grabbed? She said, just take all in. The second thing to remember is that a real witch is always bald. Bald? I said, bald ass? Boiled egg, my grandmother said. I was shocked. There was something indecent about a bald woman. Why are they bald, Grandma? Don't ask me why, she snapped. But you can take in from me that not a single hair grows on a witch's head. How horrid, disgusting, my grandma said. If she is bold, she'll be easy to spot, I said. Not at all, my grandmother said. A real witch always wears. Wait to hide her boldness. She wears a first-class wig. And 
It is important, almost important to tell a really first class way from ordinary hair, unless you pull it to see if it comes out. Then that's what I'll do. I'll have to do. I said. <coughs> Don't be foolish, my grandmother said. You can go around pulling at the hair of every lady you meet, even if she's wearing gloves. Just you try it and see what happens. So that doesn't have much either, I said. None of this is any good of its own, my grandmother said. It's only when you put them all together that they begin to make a little sense. Mind you, my grandmother went on. These weeks do cause a lot the serious problems for witches. What problems, Grandma? They make the scalp itch most terribly, she said. You can see when an actress wears a wig. Or if you are even to wear a wig, we would be putting it on over our own hair. But the witch has to put it straight on her naked scalp. And underneath the whole wig is always very rough and scratchy. It sets up a frightful itch on the bald skin. It causes nasty sores on the head, wet rash, the witch is cold. Doesn't have itch. What other things must I look for to recognize a witch? I asked. Look for the nose hole, my grandmother said. <coughs> Witches have slightly larger nose holes than ordinary people. The rim of each nose hole is pink and curved, like a rim of a certain kind of old seashells. Why do they have big nose holes? I asked. For smelling wet, my grandmother said. A real witch has the most amazing power of smell. She can actually smell out a child who is standing on the other side of the street on a pitch black night. She couldn't smell me, I said. I've just had a bath. Oh yes, she my grandmother said, the cleaner you happen to be, the more smelly you want to a witch. That can't be true, I said. An absolutely clean child gives it the most ghastly stretch to a switch. My grandmother said, the dirty you are, the less you smell. But that doesn't make sense, grandma. Oh, yes it is, my grandmother said. It isn't the dirt that the witches smell, it is you, the smell that drives the witch mad. It will come right off your own skin. It comes oozing out of your skin in waves. And these waves, stink waves, the witches call them, go floating through the air and hits the witches right smack. Grandma, don't interrupt, she said. The point is this, when you haven't washed for a week and your skin is all covered with the dirt, then quite observing the stink waves can come oozing out really strong. I shall never have a bath again, I said. Just don't have one too often. My grandmother said, once a month is bright enough for a sensible child. It was a moment like these that I loved my grandmother more than ever. Grandma, I said, if it's dark night, how can a wish smell the difference between a child and a grown-up? Because grown-ups don't have all stink waves, she said, only children do that. But I don't really give out any sting waves, do I? He said. I'm not giving them out at the very moment, am I? Not to me, you aren't. 
my grandmother said to me, you are smelling like the raspberries and cream. But to which you would be smelling absolutely disgusting. What would I be smelling of? I asked. Dog droplings. My grandma said, I reeled and stunned. Dog droplings? I cried, I'm not smelling of dog droplings. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. That's my grandmother said, speaking with a tap of relish. It should be smelling of fresh dog droplings. That simply is not true. I, I know I'm not smelling of dog droplings, still or fresh. There's no point in arguing about this, my grandmother said. It's a fact of life. I was outraged. I simply couldn't bring myself to believe what my grandmother was telling me. So, if you see a woman holding her nose as she passes you, it's strange she went down. The woman could easily be a witch. I decided to change the topic. Tell me what else to look for in a witch. I said, the eyes, my grandmother said. Look carefully at the eyes because the real eyes of a real witch are different from yours and mine. Look at the middle of each eye, where there is normally a little black dot. If she's a witch, the black dot will keep changing color, and you will see fire, and you will see me dancing right in the very center of the colored dot. If you send shivering right all over your skin. And my grandmother leaned back in her chair <coughs> and stuck over contently. As a full black cigarette, I squatted on the floor, staring up at her, fascinated. She was not smiling. She looked deadly serious. Are there other things? I asked her. Of course, there are other things, my grandmother said. You don't seem to understand that witches are as a woman at all. They look like women, they talk like women, and they are able to act like women. But in actual fact, they are totally different animals. They are demons in human shape. This is why they have claws and old hands, and women noses and regular eyes. All of these which have to concern us best. What else is different about them, Grandma? The feet, she said. We just never have toes. No toes? Great. Then what do they have? They just have feet, my grandmother said. That feet have square ends, but no toes on them at all. Does that make it difficult to walk, I asked. My grandmother said, but it doesn't give them a problem with their shoes. All ladies like to wear them, a problem with their shoes. All ladies wear rather small pointed shoes, but a witch whose feet are wide and square at the ends has most careful jumps, squeezing her feet into those neat little pointed shoes. Why does she wear wide, comfy shoes with square ends? I asked. She dared not, my grandmother said. Just as she hides her baldness with a weight, she must also hide her ugly witch's feet by squeezing them into pointy, pretty shoes. Isn't that terribly uncomfortable? I said. Extremely uncomfortable, my grandmother said, but she has to put it with it. If she wears ordinary shoes, I won't help to recognize her with it, Grandma. I'm afraid it won't, my grandmother said. 
You might probably see her limping very slightly, but only if you are watching closely. Are those the little difference then, Grandma? There are one more, my grandmother said. Just one more. What is it, Grandma? Their spit is blue. Blue? I cried. Not blue. The spit can't be blue. Blue is Burberry, she said. You didn't mean it, Grandma. Nobody can spit blue spit. I just can, she said. Is it like ink? I asked. Exactly, she said. They even use it to write with. They use their old-fashioned pen with that have nibs and they simply lick the nib. Can you know the spit? Blue spit, Grandma? If a witch has, was talking to me, would I be able to notice it? Only if you looked carefully, my grandmother said. If you look carefully, very you would probably see a light blue tingle on her teeth, but it doesn't show much. It would if she spat, I said. We just never spit, my grandmother said. They didn't. I could believe my grandmother would be lying to me. She went to church every morning of the week and said, she said grace before every meal and somebody who did that never tells lies. I was beginning to believe every word she spoke. So there you are, my grandmother said. That's about all I can tell you. None of it is very helpful. You can still never be absolutely sure whether a woman is a witch or not just by looking at her. But if she's wearing the clothes, if she has a large nose hole, the queer eyes and the hair that looks as true, it might be a wig. And if she has a bushy tingle on her teeth, if she has all of these things, then you run like mad. Grandma, I said, when you were a little girl, did you ever meet a witch? Once, my grandmother said. Well, only once. What happened? I'm not going to tell you, she said. I wouldn't frighten you coming out of your skin and give you bad dreams. Please tell me, I said. No, she said. Certain things are too horrible to talk about. Does it have something to do with your missing thumb? I asked. Suddenly her old wrinkled lips shut tightly as a pair of tongues and the hands that held the sick she has no thumb on it, began to squiver very slightly. I waited. She didn't look at me. She didn't speak. All of a sudden, she had shut herself off completely. The conversation was finished. Good night, Grandma, I said, rising from the floor and kissing her on the cheek. She didn't move. I crept out of the room and went to my bedroom. I look at you and it's easy to see. You are that someone I've been trying to meet I got your number, won't you?